Morning. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great honour to be invited along to your video forum. Uh, Bobby Jess' idea, I believe. Many famous people are invited along and hopefully my wee input can to help to have maybe a weekly or a monthly uh, session with this. Tonight I'm going to give you by request the poem written by a young man in Glasgow, Robin Cairns, who has a show at the Fringe every year. A genius of a man. And this poem is called Old Loch Gelly. Now, as <laughs> Willie Dick likes a wee preamble, I'll give you a wee preamble. We were on the bus from Inverkip, you lucky people, as it's called, up to Gourup High School. One day the bus was 20 minutes late. Everybody, but everybody in that bus got three of the belt. Absolutely dreadful. The driver was raging. Anyway, I've had a strong dislike for teachers ever since. Most of them. So this is the story of, of the poem Old Loch Gelly. They told me in terrible detail how corporal punishment felt. In Scotland, the wrongdoer's hands were thrashed with a cloven leather belt. They told me of double maths, with the man who could turn your giblets to jelly, named after the town where the belts were made, the teacher called Old Loch Gelly. <coughs> know how Stevie was climbing the gate and he got stuck on a dead sharp spike? Yeah, I gulped. Know how, know how Jenny split her head when she came off her bike? Know how, know how Jamie ate <laughs> No, it was Jenny ate a spider and it had babies in her belly. They only done it, excuse the grammar, they only done it to get out of double maths, the old law gelly. He's only got one suit, they say. It's baggy and shiny and manky. It smells of cupboard under the stair, of eggs and snottery hanky. He gives you hard sums that twist your brains and make them squeak. He gives you mare if you can't do them. He belts you if you speak. And he belts you if you fidget. And he belts you if you sigh. He belted Skelly Agnes because she wouldn't have look in his eye. He dips his belt in dog shit. <laughs> so the wounds it makes all fester. Back in a minute. So the wounds it makes all fester. He takes his holidays in Loch Gelly and goes to the works as a tester. The factory's got no windows, but smoke seeps out under the door. They test the belts on orphans. You can hear them howl, that's sore. You can hear the teachers laughing over screaming laths and saws as they forge and cast and season. At last, another Loch Gelly toss. I, I have to say, it was with some trepidation. I went to my first double maths. Loch Gelly set as a grim riddle about men running so many baths. The sun slunk by his window, afraid to peer into the room. We chewed in our pencils and fretted as he glowered through the gloom. It was Alan Malcolm that got it. Small boy, said Loch Gelly, stand. His nose had a drip and it fell from the tip as he tried to obey the command. His pencil was held up, all wet and mangled, between finger and thumb in disgust. This boy will be punished, said old Loch Gelly. There will be no repetition, I trust. For all he told me of Loch Gelly's evil, none of them mentioned his cape made out of Dead crows and darkness in an eerie carapace shape. From its awful interior, the belt was produced and every mouth went dry as he taught us an inky conundrum and the value of X and Y. He strode to the door and threw it wide and Alan d -d dribbled out after. From out in the street, as we sat, sat there unbreathing, came a gust of improbable laughter. I fully expected Loch Gelly to go out, start passing, belting passers by. Then horrible, horrible, high and hellish, came Alan Malcolm's cry. 
What was it like? We cornered him in the corridor after the bell. Mm, not too bad. He smugly lied. Don't give us it. We heard you yell. Oh, it's the sorest thing in the world, says Alan. Your insides boil with pain. Your scalp prickles and your wee wee trickles and he scuds you one again. The next few, your hands go blue and your entrails turn to pus. If you make a noise, he leans right in and says, boy, don't make a fuss. He's old and he smells and that belt is solid and he really gives it welly. As he puts it away, you have to say, thank you. Old Loch Gelly. I saw Loch Gelly on the bus last week. His real name's Mr. Grange. He's old and stooped and diminished. He troubled counting his change. For two whole days after one of his beltings, I lost the use of my arm. Standing room only. I gave him my seat. It didn't do me any harm, thank you. I like to 